for sure. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Tonight, we have Adam Ron of Joy Media here, and he is going to be discussing um, mobile apps for video making with us tonight. So hopefully you all have your smartphones or tablets nearby. Um, and as we go through, uh, you can go ahead and download them. I'll put the links in the chat to, to the, um, the iOS store and also the Android store for each of the apps. Um, if you have questions, please feel free, interrupt us. We're happy to answer questions. Um, I will be monitoring the chat. So if you put a question in the chat, I will um, find a good moment to, to mention it to Adam and have him answer the questions. Um, and then if you do want at the end, uh, we can possibly open it up for people to uh, raise your hand using the raise hand button and then ask your questions out loud if you'd like. Um, I know sometimes it's a little easier to ask them out loud than to type them all out. Uh, so we can do that at the end if you'd like, but for sure throughout the webinar, please put um, chats, comments, whatever um, down there in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll address them and um, Get to have fun there. Uh, we are recording tonight's session, so it will be up on the library's YouTube channel, um, probably, hopefully by the end of this week, maybe the beginning of next week. Um, but I will send out a follow up email to everyone with the link to that and also a feedback survey. Um, so if you can get that to a um, where you can fill that out and then send it uh, back to us for the feedback survey, um, but at least then you'll have access to the video. So if you want to sit back, relax, and kind of just absorb and enjoy and watch and observe today, you can certainly do that. And then um, if you want to watch the video uh, a second time to then uh, actually do stuff, that's totally okay too. Um, I think that's everything I have. Uh, live transcriptions, if you want to enable live transcriptions, down at the bottom of your screen next to the chat bubble, and the raise hand icon is a little uh, CC button. If you hit that CC button, you can enable live transcriptions, uh, which will allow you to see um, the text along the bottom of what we're saying too. So, okay, I think we're about ready. Um, I do see we have a first question uh, applicable to working on laptops. Um, I'm not sure if, it, I think most of these are gonna be mobile. So they're mostly gonna be for phones or tablets. Um, there may be some that translate to having a corresponding website. I don't know if, if Adam, if you want to answer that right off the top, top of your <laughs> right off the top yes. here. <laughs> um, I just uh, I tried to just respond to Sarah in the chat as well. Um, but uh, there there might be a couple of these that you can use on a um, on a computer, particularly one of those computers that kind of doubles as a tablet. You know, they can't really make up its mind. Um, I think sometimes they have apps for those or apps that you're, that are available on those uh, devices. Excellent. Uh, but it's mainly geared towards cell phones, actual tablets, um, like an iPad, predominantly what we would think of, and then um, iOS phones. Perfect. Great. Okay. Well, and with that, I also would like to introduce Adam, <laughs> who is our, our uh, presenter tonight. Um, and I'll let you go ahead and jump right in and take it away for us. Great. Thank you, Susan. Um, hi, everyone. A lot of familiar faces there. And for those of you on my end, that's a joke because I can't see a single person. <laughs> um, my name is Adam, and uh, I'm a video producer by day and by night. Uh, I help out with things like this at the library and um, do a handful of other things. Um, you'll have to pardon me. No one that uh, is, unless you've met me before, you wouldn't notice this, but um, I'm a little congested with this wild swing in the weather. So um, you might hear me sniffle once or twice or clear my throat. Uh, I am very well. Thank you, though, for asking. Um, so anyway, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I do video production. I've been doing it for... Uh, about 18 years now, and um, I produce uh, commercials and documentaries um, and things, and I have bigger, larger, fancier, much, much more expensive cameras than what we're going to be talking about today, um, but I have a big soft spot for um, cell phones and, and what they can do and, and how uh, incredible they are and how everyone has one in their pockets typically, so uh, this is a uh, a lesson or a, a workshop or a course that I uh, get really jazzed up about. Uh, I am very nerdy and I get jazzed up about most video production content. So um, I might talk a little fast. Please slow me down if you need to. If you're watching this recorded um, on YouTube, there is a half speed button, which I know um, I have been told by my viewers helps them out quite a bit. So uh, slow me down if you need to ask questions. Um, I am... Uh, very, um, I, I don't mind halting things to answer questions because if you, if you have a question, someone else is probably thinking the same thing. Um, and, uh, we've got some time at the end built in, uh, to answer questions as well. Uh, if you just want to kind of keep it quiet or, or just let me go on, that's totally fine as well. So, 
Um, I run my own freelance video production company. Um, I also produce documentaries for the U of I. Uh, I'm working in my spare bedroom right now. Um, it's actually my, I have a four month old daughter at home. This is her nursery now too. Um, it's a very large room. I'm not taking any of her actual space. So um, don't give me too much grief there. Um, and all my stuff is just crammed into a corner. So uh, don't worry about any of the toys in the background or anything else like that. And um, with all that being said, I'm going to share my uh, screen and uh, let's see if we can do this here. Uh, and I've got just a little bitty presentation uh, that we're going to go over uh, first, and then we will hop into um, actually doing stuff on our phones because um, our phones are our tablets. Uh, if I say phone, I mean phone and or tablet. Uh, I'm not trying to discriminate against one or the other or, or, or neglect one. Um, I'm just, that's just the terminology I'm using in, in this case. Um, is everyone able to see the, it says the basics really big, uh, that screen, I would assume so. Um, so uh, this is just kind of the outline of what we're going to cover here. Good. Casey, thank you pretty much. Yes, I can see um, it as well. <laughs> okay, cool. It's showing up with a green outline. So I assume it's all good on my end. Yes. Um, and I'll just go until people tell me to stop, you know, if it's not mm -hmm. visible, great. Um, so um, we're going to go over some of these basics uh, and each one of these has its own little slide dedicated to it. There's a lot of information on this and because it's being recorded, um, I have put a lot of text on the screen. So uh, if you don't capture, if you don't catch it all, uh, feel free to go back and watch the recording over on um, the library's YouTube channel when they send you that link and you can pause it and check it out. I have also sent a um, the presentation slash PDF to Susan and I believe that she shares those as well. Yes. Um, so easy to follow along. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, this is, let's see here, yep, this is my number two. So we wanna keep it steady. This is one of the most important parts of um, doing anything with our cell phones. Now, when you have um, I'm sure everyone here has probably seen like a, a news camera person with a huge camera on their shoulders. Um, that is the best way to hold a camera with your hands because it provides three points of contact. That's what a tripod does as well. There's three legs on a tripod. That's three legs of contact. Um, and that's the steadiest way to hold a camera is over there on your shoulder. However, uh, we don't want to have something in our pockets that can like expand and go onto our shoulder. So we want to be able to just use this little thing. Now, one of the things that we have with, um, you know, more professional cameras like this one I'm holding right now, and uh, part of the part of the injury there, um, is that I can actually hold the lens and the body. And then when I put my eye up to it, that's providing one, two, and then three back on my eye, three points of contact. So that's a lot steadier even than a cell phone. With a cell phone, one of the problems that we come into is that we've only got these two points of contact and if you're taking like a selfie or something, you've only got one point of contact. So it can be a little wiggly, a little wobbly. Um, the reason three points is so important is that that's the steadiest shape that we can come up with. Um, if you've ever sat at a restaurant table oh, that's a little wobbly, it's because it's got four legs. If it was a restaurant tripod, you would have been totally fine. Um, but we want to be able to keep our cell phones or whatever we're using, our tablets, steady. Um, so uh, if we can use a tripod, great. If not, it's totally okay because what we're going to do is um, go over some ways. We just just hit my microphone. I apologize about that. So instead of holding it with one hand, you almost always, if you can, hold it with two. Um, one of the things that I like to do too when I'm filming is actually rest it on rest it on things. So I'm not going to actually rest it here on my microphone, but I like to rest it on things, and that gives me an even sturdier shot than if I were to just hold it out and provide a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of wobble. Um, and uh, this is one of the most important things. It's really very unnerving for a viewer to watch footage. It looks like someone's just kind of walking around filming. Um, so try to keep it steady as best as you can. Um, and I have literally just propped it up against the walls before my cell phone to film time lapses or to film other stuff. It doesn't really matter. Um, I do it for family photos all the time. If I'm out hiking, I just find a rock or a tree, put it on there, set a timer, turn the screen towards me, go back and take it. Um, again, we want to keep it as steady as possible um, here. Uh, and then uh, another main concern that we have is getting close. So one of the things that, again, larger cameras and um, you know, things that we, we like to do is zoom in because with a camera like this, I don't have to get near anything. I can stay way away. I can zoom in from the comfort of wherever I'm at. Um, cell phones don't 
work that way. Uh, as you can see, um, I actually don't have it near me, but uh, there is no lens attached to the front of this. It's just the flat lens. So I don't have that zoom lens that I could zoom in on. You can actually buy some additional lenses that clip onto your cell phones. Um, if you would like, uh, it's something that uh, if you're really, really interested in this stuff, I'd recommend you could do it for like, I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks. I think they're pretty inexpensive. But one of the things that we wanna do is get closer. These cell phone cameras right now are amazing. They are really, really high quality, but we wanna get as almost as close as we can. You don't wanna be bumping into things obviously, but get as close as you can. Try to fill the screen with whatever you're filming. Um, and one of the other reasons that we wanna do that is that each of these cell phones, uh, regardless of what model of iPhone you have or what model of you know an Android or a Motorola you have, is that when it records or takes photos, it only has so many pixels. So it only has so many lines of resolution horizontally and vertically, vertically and horizontally, I did those wrong. So the more you know, pixels that you can cover with something or cover something with, the better resolution it's gonna look. It's gonna look crisper, it's gonna look clearer. Um, so you want to get for the most part, as close as you can. Um, if you're taking some wide shots of something to kind of establish a place, that's fine. You don't have to get right up to the edge of like a building. You can back off a little bit, but try to fill the screen, make sure that there is a person or the content or the subject, whatever you're filming, make sure that that is kind of front and center in there and, and the main focal point of your shot. Um, and try not to use the, like the, like pinch zoom, um, it's, a digital zoom. So what that's doing is that's, it's actually just cropping in on that original image. So it's like um, trying to turn a VHS tape into like a 4k or a high definition video. Um, it's just not going to work. You can't, we can't pull this resolution out of nowhere. Um, we got to get closer and, and make sure that it's high resolution from the start. Um, and also uh, we're going to talk a little bit about audio with this one. Um, this also is very important with audio. Uh, I'm sure every one of you has heard some sort of video with people talking in the backgrounds and someone is 15 feet away and you can see that they're talking and you can kind of hear them, but you can hear like the whole restaurant or you can hear the whole rest of the class. You can hear people coughing. Um, audio is going to work the same way. Uh, and luckily cell phones, for those of you who don't know, uh, this joke goes over a lot better with younger crowds. So I don't, I don't know who's y'all here. Um, these things actually are made to make phone calls. So there's a really good microphone in the very bottom of it, if you weren't aware. Um, so when you're recording audio, you want to get that microphone at the bottom there as close as you can to whatever you're recording. Um, again, if you're recording someone, don't put the microphone like in their mouth. That's rude. Uh, but get it as close as you can um, and while you're still comfortable and um, and providing uh, some social distancing um, if you're if you're able. Uh, another thing that I recommend is reviewing your footage or doing a test run. So uh, whatever you're going to do, don't assume it's going to work. And maybe I just have like the worst luck on the planet. But if I don't test something out, even after doing this for 18 years, if I don't make sure that my batteries are charged or that I have footage on or I have clean little SD cards or that I think my cables are all going to work, uh, something will go wrong. Uh, so uh, Susan and I actually, we test this out uh, last week. So we run through this and make sure everything works. You want to make sure that you're doing the same thing with your phone, um, particularly because if you're maybe recording something um, like this and you, it looks like it's recording, you may not be getting audio because you know, you're not seeing audio necessarily if you're recording video on there. So after you're done recording, take five seconds play it, make sure that that audio is there, make sure that the video looks the way you want it, that you recorded out of the right, you know, camera, since these have cameras on both sides. Um, you just want to make sure that whatever you're going to do, it's working. And it just takes 10, 20, 30 seconds to do this, whether you're doing a test run ahead of time or reviewing footage after you want to make sure that that's recording. Um, you know, for someone like me, if I'm not making sure that my footage is recording and then I get back to my studio, my spare bedroom, my, my, my daughter's nursery, and, and I go to edit footage and I just don't have footage because I didn't review it and I don't know what happened. Maybe my hand slipped when I hit the record button. Um, I could literally lose thousands and thousands of dollars from doing that. So um, we're not in the same, feasibly not in the same level of, of uh, you know, crisis mode if that were to happen to you, not recording something on your family or on your, on your phone or, or tablet. But if you're at a family event and you missed a really cool event or a special moment, um, those things can be, you know, really hard to, to come by again. So um, test run, review afterwards, 
Uh, another thing that I like to recommend you do is live view or live review. So if you were to, uh, you know, turn on your cell phone video camera, um, a lot of cell phone cameras have the, uh, you're just looking at me now out of this one. Let's see if I can see this right. Uh, up here in the corner, I've got a little, it's like a little, it looks like a little recycle circle missing one of the, the lines. If you hit that, uh, it's going to switch that camera to the front of my hitting it, right? There we go. Yep, there so you go. there you go. Um, so now you're just seeing my hand, but you're seeing this recording this. Um, so if I were to do this and record this way, I can actually record, I can actually record and see myself on the screen at the same time. That way I know it's recording. So if I hit this in the video and I know that it's recording, I can hit record. I can see that there's a recording countdown. It's bright red. It's letting me know, Hey, you're recording. Um, so I can walk around and do that and make sure that whatever I'm filming is in focus, um, that it's interesting, that the, maybe the audio is getting captured. So um, some some recommendations there. And I know this is a lot of information right off the bat. And I promise we will get to the, the fun, actually touching our um, phones and doing stuff. Um, but there's a lot of basics to, to try and cover. And um, as you get out and maybe take more photos or capture more audio or film some more videos, uh, just trying to remember one or two of these things at a time. Um, I mean, you can print out this PDF and take it with you. That's cool too. But um, try to remember one or two things at a time. And then every time you go out, maybe remember one more thing. Look back at this, refresh your memory, try to remember something else the next time. Um, and ultimately after 10, 15, 20 times of this, it's going to become second nature. You're not even going to realize that you're doing it. So there's a lot of things that I do while I'm out filming or recording audio and um, I don't even realize that I'm doing them sometimes because I've just been doing it for so long. It's like driving a car or riding a bike. It just kind of becomes muscle memory to you. Um, one of the other things that I recommend you do is utilize natural light. And I've actually got a light behind you here, behind in front of me here, I guess. Um, I've got it on because it's night out or it's kind of dim out. And I've got curtains here, but as Susan can attest to, I've actually... I'm parked right in front of a huge window so that if I were to do something like this during the day, I don't have to use electricity. I don't have to turn this light on at all. I can let that window have a nice big, I have a huge, I mean, it's like a big bay window or something. It's like six feet wide. Um, and it's, so it's a big source of light for me and it's totally free. Um, I have another light turned on here in the back um, to kind of separate me from this really dark background. Um, but try to utilize natural light whenever you can. So windows are great. Um, you know, I have seen professional food photographers, they have maybe one light and then they park all of their stuff next to a window at their kitchen. Um, and it looks phenomenal. And, and the people that I'm talking about, you have definitely seen their work in publications before or, or, or on, uh, commercials. Um, and they use a window for a lot of their, a lot of their work. So, um, really nice really free, <laughs> really inexpensive source of light. Um, and the sun, as far as lighting is concerned, it's the best source of light that we can get. It's the most uh, pleasing to the eye. It's what we base all of our other lights off of actually. So um, try to use it whenever you can. Um, and then if you're filming outside, one of the things to keep in mind is that, and I'm sure you've seen this before, the sun creates really harsh shadows on faces. Um, it can make you look kind of shiny. Um, it can you know, give you like kind of those raccoon eyes if it's up at noon or something like that. Um, so one of the reasons that it does that is that because um, it's just not soft. It's a big, big, bright spotlight. So what we want to do is diffuse that light a little bit. So filming right next to a building out of the sun, but right in the shade, um, filming under a tree, things like that, where we're still getting a lot of that really nice natural sunlight bouncing off of everything and coming into our cameras um, or our cell phones, but we're not in the direct bright sunlight. Um, so that's one of those things. And I'm sure you've seen these too. And um, if anyone has ever done this and they've turned on maybe a zoom call and they've put a, uh, their window at their back because their yard looks amazing. And then you're just like a silhouette and your yard is kind of too bright or whatever. Um, there's too much contrast there. And the same thing's happening in the middle of the day when the sun's out. Um, so again, contrast is something that you want to kind of keep in mind uh, when doing that. And um, as good as the cameras are in our cell phones, um, there's still little bitty computer processors in them. So uh, we want to do everything that we can to help them um, produce the best image available. Uh, all right. And um, composition considerations. Um, this is one that we could cover for 
literally an entire course, I think. It's say it could be its own uh, class, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, there's a lot of these. Um, there are people, um, famous cinematographers, the people that film, they actually run the cameras for, for, for films and, and television shows that make this their whole careers. And they're really good um, at doing these things. So with a really good composed shot, and by composed shot, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's just um, how everything looks in the frame of your shot. So if you're looking at me right now, I'm probably a little bitty on your screen, but this is a fairly poorly composed shot. I'm right in the middle of it. There's a light over the shoulder of mine. There's some like a dim crib and some other stuff over there. And no one knows what's happening on this big gray wall here. So nothing is too exciting, but I am like right in the middle. That's where I want to be. Um, you know, I'm not trying to win an Oscar or anything with this one. Um, sorry to say that Susan, but I'm just, I'm not, um, <laughs> I hope you're going to forgive me. Um, but you want to make your shot look as pretty as you can typically. So um, the rule of thirds is a really, really important one. And it is um, available to like almost everyone on almost every cell phone. And we'll go through here in a sec how to turn that on actually. But if you imagine your screen cut into three separate columns and then three separate horizontal rows, um, what you want to do is try and position your shots either at the intersections of those. So there's, you know, what, like an intersection over here, intersection down here, you know, there's, I, it's really hard to, I don't want to draw on my actual camera lens, but um, if you imagine those lines going across your camera, um, the intersections of those lines, um, the middle, the sides, those sort of things, using those lines to help you create, um, you know, to compose your shots creates these really pretty images. And uh, very honestly, I'm not sure if we know as humans, I don't know if we know why that is, why it's so pleasing, uh, but it is um, actually very factually true that that's a thing. So um, if you can, let's see here, that is, right? So if you look at, I'm gonna do this. If you look at my face here, you'll actually see they're very faint here, but I've got a couple of these lines on here, uh, over there. Uh, yeah, so we've got those lines here um, and they are probably in your cell phone if you've got this on for taking photos um, and you can go to your uh, the little gear typically um, to yep that's right uh, da, 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 da. if you go to your gear and get to your settings on an android phone they are called grid lines and i've just got them turned on um, i've actually got them on my camera as well and even 18 years in i still use these when I'm framing up shots. So I try to make sure that things interact or you know, line up on these intersections. Um, that is one of the easiest and best ways that you can just almost walk out your door right now and start taking better photos and, and filming better videos is by making these shot compositions look a lot better. Um, so, and, and there's, again, there's a, so, so much information on that that I wanna cover, but we just don't have the time. I also um, find it's really helpful for horizon lines to yes. do rule of thirds and use those, those as yeah. guides. Yeah, um, exactly. So it's, you know, it's not going to be, you know, kind of like cockeyed or anything. Um, you can also use them to, um, you know, line the horizon up with the bottom line. So then the top two thirds of the image is sky or vice versa. Um, so you can do that in a lot of ways or frame up buildings that way with the, the horizontal or the vertical ones rather. So lots of really, really cool things that you can do with those. I really recommend turning those on and just never turning them off. Um, and the great thing is, is that I've got these on my camera. They don't show up. Well, that's my child. That's not the horizon lines. There we go. Uh, we'll get back into there real quick. Those are not going to show up on my final image. They're just for us. So you don't have to worry about that showing up in the photos that you take or anything like that. So turn them on, start trying to line some stuff up, take some photos, review them after you've taken them, see how they look, see how they make you feel. Um, and the nose and head, nose room and headspace is something that we want to talk about a little bit. If you're interviewing maybe someone on camera, or are you taking some photos? So nose room is exactly what I think it is. So if I am being interviewed slightly and I'm looking slightly off camera, I want to make sure that I have a lot of space in front of my nose here. Um, and it can be the left or the right. If someone is being interviewed off camera and they're like this, and there's not a lot of space in front of their nose here, and there's all this weird empty space behind them, it's going to make the viewer feel uncomfortable um, because we can't see what's in front of them. We want to put ourselves in their shoes and it's, it makes it for very unnerving um, and unnerving experience. And this can, you can actually see people use this 
to really good effect. If you ever watch like my wife loves like true crime uh, TV shows and stuff like that. So I'll come out, you know, when she's watching something and there's always someone and it's got horrible nose room, but it makes me feel uncomfortable right away. And I, and I know what they're going for. So um, something to consider and then headspace too. So headspace is the exact same thing, just the top of the head. You want to make sure that people aren't cut off, um, you know, their eyebrows or that they don't have like, it's just the top of their head and you can't see their mouth. So having a whole head in the frame is, uh, is very important as well. So um, there are some other things that I want to touch about on the other thoughts column really quick. Um, so uh, to make your shots look better, uh, utilize color as much as you can, whether it's contrasting or complementary colors, um, create depth. And you can do this by using shadows, um, lead lines, which are like, if you've ever looked down a, like you've gone to like a main street before, like a small main street or something anywhere in the, the country or anywhere in the world really. And like just stood in the center road and look down and you see the like buildings going down into the horizon. Those are lead lines. So they draw your eye in. Um, so when you're out taking photos, when you're out looking at stuff, look at where your eyes go um, and try to see what has drawn your eye there. Odds are it's the shape of a tree, the shape of a building, the shape of a road or something like that. Um, having layers. So if you've, uh, the best way to describe this is saying like, um, you know, like a really cool photograph of like mountains where there's kind of, they're kind of, they get kind of mistier and a little bit different in color. There's like a gradient to them. Um, so using layers like that to create depth. Um, and then contrast, you don't want heavy contrast, uh, but a little bit can really make your, your item or your subject or your, the person and whatever you're filming or photographing, it can make it pop. Um, and then a little bit of movement can go a long way. So movement in the frame is, uh, can be really important. If you're, um, filming video, it can give your shot a little bit of life. Um, you can even photograph motion really well, but it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so combining all these techniques can really help your composition game, you know, it, it just improve by tenfold. And again, this is something that you can do out the door tonight, um, just by turning on, um, those grid lines or those rule of thirds. Um, and you'll actually, some people, some cameras or some cell phones rather I've seen have different ones of them. So some of them have the three, um, some of them have like 12, some of them have nine. Um, some of them have, uh, the Fibonacci sequence, which is like a fun mathematical squiggly line. Um, so try those out, see what works, utilize them. Um, thank me later. Um, or, you know, if you get really obsessed with this hobby, um, just come talk to me later. You don't have to thank me. Um, and I'll, and I'll tell you how to get over uh, being a, a camera nerd. Um, so we're actually going to get started here in just a second. Um, so uh, a couple of things to remember. Uh, we're going to be going over, um, I don't know, a dozen or so apps tonight. Not a single one of these apps is perfect, um, which is fine. I don't know any app that is. Um, so take that in mind. Um, and what works well for me and my circumstances, you just might not like it. Uh, you know, I use an Android phone. Uh, well, what is this? I don't even know. I don't even know what the actual brand of my phone is, to be honest. I've had a, a case over it since day one. Um, I have a Samsung phone, so uh, I should probably know these sort of things as a camera guy. Um, so what I, works? I'm also dealing. Uh, have a Samsung Galaxy phone over here. Oh, great! Um, well. And an sorry. iPad. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry, folks. I'm wiping my nose real quick. I apologize. Um, so, um, and I've got an iPad as well. And some of the apps that I use on my phone don't work as well as my, on my iPad. Uh, iOS phones, uh, Apple phones have some of their own built-in apps. Uh, Androids do too. So feel free to use the built-in apps. Feel free to find other apps that you just think look good. Find some that are well-reviewed. Read some of the reviews. Um, find something that works for you. Um, one of the things that I really stress is that apps are here to help you, not hinder you. So if you are trying to do something and the app is preventing you from doing it, um, I know I say that no app is perfect, but that app is probably actually a very bad app. And you should probably try to find something different. Um, so uh, if you find yourself getting really frustrated uh, and then um, Sarah, uh, it ends when I stop talking. Um, I've had a lot of caffeine today. So um, I actually, I think what, uh, Susan, we have like 90 minutes on this, an hour or something. Like yeah, that. roughly, roughly around okay. in there. And then, you know, um, time for questions. And yeah. Sorry. And of course, we'll have the recording too. So if you need to leave yeah. early, feel free to to duck out when you need to. Sure. Um, and Sarah, I'm, I will talk as quick as I can for you. So um, you can get back to whatever is more important than me at this moment in time. Um, but uh, that, that is a great question. And again, feel free to ask 
um, questions throughout the the whole process. And Sarah, if you have to go, that's totally fine. I'm giving you a hard time. Um, and you can you can view the yes. recording after the yep. fact. We'll send yeah. Uh, we'll, anybody who's registered will get the link for the for the recording. Good. <laughs> um, so again, apps are here to help, not hinder. Um, use again, use what you like. Um, I'm going to give you some of the ones that I like. Uh, I am constantly downloading apps, playing with them, finding out if they are good or bad. Um, I played with a bunch of new ones over the weekend. Some I didn't like, some I did, and we actually added to this list um, from the previous version of this course. Um, and then another one that I, I can't stress enough, uh, please don't pay for apps. They're like, if you really, 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 really want to, I give you my blessing, but try not to pay for apps. They're really incredible free apps out there that we're going to go over tonight. None of the apps that we're going to use tonight, you have to pay a dime for. There are the, what do they call them? Freemium. So there are like <laughs> premium versions of these apps that you can pay for. Some of them have ads. Some of them have watermarks, but for the most part, they're all free. Please don't pay for apps. Uh, because one of the things that I've done before when I've paid for apps is that in like six months when they update it or you get a new phone, it might not be compatible. And then you've wasted 10 or 20 or however much, however many dollars on that. Um, so don't pay for apps. Uh, and then again, the presentation and recording are going to be sent over later. So follow along as best you can at this moment in time. Uh, are there any other questions at this, uh, at this time? I'm going to stop that screen sharing real quick. I don't uh, don't see any other questions in uh, chat at the moment, but again, right. feel free to put your questions in the chat as we go along, and I can relay them to Adam, um, and then we'll have some time at the end uh, where you can ask questions uh, verbally too. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and uh, I love when we do this in person, and I can actually like go over to people and show people on their phones how to do things. <laughs> and um, we we hope to be back in person for library programming in April, hopefully. So hopefully we'll have you back over the summer and and can actually do some stuff in person again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Uh, so uh, we're going to go over a handful of different ones. Um, the first one that we're going to go over, we're going to go over two photo editing ones. Now, um, I know I think this course is is labeled as like a video one, video centric one, but um, I use photos in a lot of my videos. They're great. Um, the photos that cell phones take now are like top notch, incredible. So we're going to go over a couple of photo editing ones that I really like. Um, the first one is called Snapseed, if that'll focus there. Uh, there we go. We'll zoom that in a little bit, why not? Is Snapseed, uh, is that the right direction for everyone? Right? Yes, everyone at least it? for okay. me, yep. Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. we're gonna click on this. It's really, really basic. Uh, I'll try to get the reflection of my light out of there. Um, hey, and then you can see my beautiful face as well. Uh, so this is so basic, it just has a big plus right in the screen, right when you start it. So, um, and again, as you download these, or if you try to download these, um, you might have to give your phone, you might have to give the app permission to look at photos and videos on your phone. Um, please keep in mind that I have not read through every line of text um, according to these. Um, you know, download apps with your own discrimination. Um, and again, delete them if you're not using them. Um, but so you might have to do that. You might have to like create an account. But again, none of these, you should have to pay for anything right off the bat. So this photo app, uh, if you want to edit a photo, uh, you're just going to hit the plus sign right there in the middle. And that's going to pop up, open all of these things. I have a, a really, really bad photo I just took, apparently. Um, we're going to pick one of, or I've got a really pretty one of my cats down here. So it'll show you your album. And we're going to open that photo. Um, you probably don't have this photo of my cats, but it's okay. <laughs> um, right off the bat, down here, there are a bunch of of uh, these filters. So you can kind of click on these. Um, and let me get over here, actually. I'm stepping on stuff. So you can click on these and see what it does to, uh, let's see, again, I'm gonna try and keep that reflection off, folks, I apologize. So you can click on these and see what it does. Uh, and this is, they're, you know, kind of Instagram-y, but there are some really nice filters. Um, and one of the things that I like about the, um, about, Snapseed is you can actually tell it how much of the filter you want by dragging your finger across the screen. Um, so you can see the original. Um, oh, hold on. Where's that at? Uh, so you can pick any of those. You can scroll all the way back over to current um, or uh, we'll go current and we'll just hit the little uh, check mark down here and say that that's what we want. 
Now the real, real powerful part of Snapseed is down here in the tools. So after you've figured out what, um, you know, what one of these filters you wanted, if you click on tools, you'll see all of this stuff pop up. Now, as someone who has a pretty good training in um, like Photoshop, I guess I should probably bring my mic a little closer. I apologize if you guys had trouble hearing that for a minute or so. Um, these are very professional tools in a totally free photo editing app that you can use on your phone. So uh, no joke, this is the one that I use all the time. Um, I have a set of kind of edits that I like to make for my business photos and then for clients and, and other things. So we'll walk you through, or I'll walk you through a little bit of these real quick. So tune image is probably the most powerful one. It's up here, tune image, if you click that. Um, and there's a handful of things you can see what you're editing here. So if I were to drag this over, you can see our brightness increases all the way over and you can do this anywhere on your screen. So you can see the brightness goes all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. You can get it back to normal. Super simple, right? Uh, this little bitty um, gearbox down here, and not the gearbox, the little slider box, if you hit that, oh, there we go. You can have all these other ones. So contrast, we can adjust the contrast. Um, I'm just gonna boost the brightness just a little bit more. Uh, I've got the contrast down. We can go to saturation, so you can desaturate it. You can make your the colors really pop there. Um, the ambiance, it's a really fun one. It just kind of increases this like general ambience of your of your image. Uh, we'll go back, we're gonna do highlights. We're gonna drop the highlights down to bring out some of the majestic shades in my cat's beard <laughs> there. Uh, we have some shadows, you can make the shadows pop and get rid of some of those shadows if you want. Just make all um, that floof stand out, right? Yeah, and then, <laughs> um, you know, warmth. So uh, if you're familiar with color science, we can make it look like a cold winter day or a warm fall day or anything in between. So whatever you want to do there. We'll hit the check mark again. Um, under tools, you can adjust curves. So this is the how uh, mathematically how we go from light to dark. So, um, you know, you can add in these like color curves if you're in familiar with color science at all um, to get rid of, I'm going to do that again real quick so we can show you. So let's say that I have done something and I just absolutely hate it. It's too contrasty. This little bitty X down here, will just X out of that. For you. So if you click the um, the little check mark, it'll save it. If you click the little X, it'll get out of that. Uh, you know, you can crop your images down if you want, um, and it's got a bunch of different crop modes. So you can, you know, crop in square. You can crop in uh, like film, sixteen by nine. Um, so you can do whatever you want. You can move that crop around a little bit. Uh, you know, shrink it up. If I just wanted it on one of my cats, um, the selfish one that thinks she's really cool. Uh, and again, we'll click the little thing. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff. So you can do film grain, there's, you know, black and white, there's, you know, like vignettes are um, really popular. So like you can, you know, make it look super Instagram-y or kind of old school, whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all you have to do is go down here and hit export after you're done editing it. Uh, and you can save it. Um, which says create a copy of your photo or export it, which is create a copy of your photo. Um, I do export for some reason. I can never find it when I hit save. Um, you could also share it directly with someone, but I like to hit export. It's all done. Uh, and then I can find that photo that I just edited. Uh, I'm going to find it in my apps real quick. Um, so if we look, this is the photo I just edited. Uh, my little kitties, I'll back that off just a little <laughs> bit. Um, they're in um, on my phone in a matter of minutes. Again, this is a really, um, this is like one of the most pro tools app that I've that I've, I've come across and it's called Snapseed, totally free. Um, uh, and then now we're gonna use Lightroom. Um, so Snapseed is great. Um, again, if you're using um, any sort of photos and you wanna post to you know social media or whatever, great. I would use that instead of the built-in tools that we have um, on those um, on those apps. Um, again, I use this professionally all the time. Uh, we are going to hop over to an Adobe product called Lightroom. And this is one that a lot of professional photographers use as well. Um, it's very similar to Photoshop. They don't have a free version of Photoshop that we can, that we can all access. So where are you gonna use Lightroom? It's very similar. So, uh, when you open it up again, if you need to um, maybe 
let's see if that'll stay there. There we go. So you can actually open up your camera down here in, how are you going to focus? Sorry, my technology doesn't want to work for me tonight. So uh, you can actually open up your camera with this um, and take an image. That's what this, uh, here's what everything looks like in, in the, the light of day. This is how incredible these cameras are. I have a professional camera here. That's what the room looks like. This is my cell phone camera. Um, and you can see every grimy detail in my uh in the in the room here so it's my big Pretty light. Impress impressive amount of light that it can that it can pull in there yeah so this is i mean yeah. and it's just utilizing your camera's basic mm -hmm. um uh uh or your cell phone's basic camera so mm -hmm. uh we've got there uh, i don't want to move this around too much you guys will see that i'm wearing like swim trunks or something um and uh so uh, you can take a photo I'll get my hand out of there let's just take a photo of that light it's pretty boring but we'll go back um and then we are going to uh, 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 get all photos. Um, so if you go to um, all photos up there, we're going to find a photo of this light. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a lot of very similar pro tools that we had over in Snapseed. Um, so there is masking. So uh, masking is really, really fascinating, but I don't have time to get into it. But essentially what it does is it uses an AI system to determine what the most important aspect of the frame is. So if you were to click that, it would probably determine that this light and the light stand were the most important part. And it would just let us edit that. Um, so we could color correct just that and then go back and color correct the rest of the room. Or we could wait until afterwards, color correct the room or do whatever we wanted. Uh, make edits and then go back and create a mask around that. So uh, really fascinating. It does take a couple of minutes though. Um, so again, you can crop here. So we're going to hit that little crop. Um, you can zoom in and you can actually see as I go into crop, this is giving us those guidelines again, those rule of third guidelines to even help us after the fact um, with our shot composition. So we're going to adjust that. You can actually adjust this little thing here uh, at the bottom to rotate it a little bit if you'd like. Uh, and then let's see, we'll get back to even there. Uh, if you want to rotate, if you want to straighten it, if you hit straighten down here at the bottom, it will just automatically straighten for you. Uh, to undo, there's a little undo button up there at the thing, and it, it will tell you it undid the auto straighten. Uh, once you're done with whatever you want to do in this edit mode, we click the little check mark again. Uh, you can find some other stuff down here. So different color, different effects. Uh, there's lots and lots of really uh, uh, really good stuff here. So again, um, sliding tools, uh, very simple. You can do all of this with your uh, with your hand. Uh, and then when you're done, the little share button. Now this one's a little bit more different. There's not like a save or anything like that. You got to go to share, uh, which is that little bitty triangle thing. And you can share to whatever you'd like. You can save to your device, uh, get a link if you want to invite people to share it. Um, but normally I would just share it to device. And then we have got that photo saved on our device. And now it is ready for um, us to, to upload or share or whatever we've got. So uh, again, a really, really powerful tool um, at your fingertips on your phone, um, utilizing your, your cell phone's camera. So uh, really good with photos. There are a lot of other photo editors out there. I don't know if um, iOS has its own uh, photo editor, but it's probably just as good. Uh, these are the two that I like with the most professional tools that I know of that it's also free. Um, so we're going to hop into audio real quick. Uh, and um, this is one that's been around for a long time. It's called WavePad. Uh, I think it's called WavePad Free, which is kind of weird. Uh, if we can, uh, you going to focus on me, my friend. Hey, there we go. I have to Maybe. just a little bit. Hey, there we go. Hold on, hold on. Oh, almost. I swear I do this for a living, guys. There we go. Hey, there we go. WavePad Free. Um, so most of these I'll have free in the title. Uh, I'm going to say, no, I don't want that title. This one is one that will have ads below. Um, uh, and it's very simple, even though it looks a little basic. So, uh, if you want to record an audio file and I have recorded tons and tons of audio file with this, I record sound effects with this with my mouth. I'll go up to like a, a stream and record audio effects that I can then use later in my professional videos by doing it with my phone. Uh, there's a little semi hidden red button just because it's blurred out. If you hit that, it's going to start recording and you can actually see these waveforms appearing as I'm talking. So as I'm talking, 
you can see them appearing on the screen. And this is gonna look like this for everyone who talks or if there's, I can't snap very well with this wrist brace, but you get the, you get the point. Um, and we're just gonna stop recording. And then we're left with, uh, if any of you are audiophiles or, or know much about um, audio, we've got all these waveforms. So these are all the words that I've said. You can zoom in to parts of it. So this is the whole one. This little one up top is the whole audio file that recorded. So whether this is 15 seconds or five minutes, the whole thing will show up up here. And then what's in between the little grayed out area or the little grayed area is what's going to appear down here. Uh, so yeah, it is different on uh, on an iOS device, but it is the I believe it is the the same the same makeup. So yes. once you're zoomed in, um, you can actually go down here on this main part and start. You can select stuff by just pressing your finger down and selecting. Uh, you can edit this stuff out. We want to go over to edit, obviously, to do that. And if you select something and you're not in edit yet, don't worry because it still saves what you hit because it probably understands that you're like me and you get ahead of yourself sometimes. So once we're over in edit, uh, let's see here, we'll, we wanna go over so you can cut, uh, oh, hold on, edit. So we wanna, let's say we wanna delete some of this stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm hitting too many things. Let's say we wanna delete this section. I'm just gonna hit delete, it's gonna delete that. I wanna get rid of this little thing right there. You can delete that. Oh, did I just delete my- I think you just deleted the whole thing. I just did my whole thing. <laughs> edit let's undo, see. right? <laughs> yeah, where's my undo at? Hold on. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> discard i'm gonna just oh hold on yes there we go so we've got this back here oh we'll get that it'll focus nope, a second nope. ah, there we go hey there, there we, go. we are perfect uh, so when we're when we're let's say zoomed in here uh and i want to get rid of some of those um, you can edit you can trim you can actually silence it so if there's maybe a little bit of room noise or something you can hit silence I uh, keep hitting the wrong thing, guys. I apologize. You hit silence. Uh, insert silence uh, at the current selection. There's a bunch of different options. And you can see all those wave, um, the little wave pad lines, the lines, the audio lines disappeared. Uh, so now that whole section is silent. Oh, I don't think my audio is on, but you can hear some stuff being recorded there as you play through. Uh, and there's a little bitty audio meter down here at the bottom. So you can see uh, above my Encanto ad, you can see how loud that is and what's being played. So really, really powerful um, uh, effect. There's a lot of, um, if you go into like edit uh, and you're trying to do like, uh, if you do like cleanup and it's got a bunch of like, you know, different ones, if you go into levels, uh, there's like compressor normalize. If you're familiar with any of these audio terms, WavePad offers these for um, like a premium version. So you have to pay for them, I believe. Uh, you really don't need these. This is a really, really good app. And again, it's gonna use that really good microphone that's already built into your camera. Um, so again, this one is phenomenal. Um, to export it, uh, let's see, let's go back to, oh. so if we go back to home on our screen, if we go back to home uh, under export right there, and you hit export, the best way to do this from WavePad though, is to email it to yourself. So you just wanna have your email set up. Um, if you do save as, it gets buried in a weird folder on your phone and I have a hard time finding it. Um, on an iPad, I think, or a tablet, you probably have better luck doing it that way by saving as because you can like type in and it, the folder structures are a little bit more computer-like. Um, but for me, I just email uh, and then, yeah, you just click save and then it'll pop open with an email. Um, with whatever email service you want to do. So I email it to myself all the time, utilize it in Google Drive, download it under my computer, and edit it into, um, into my videos. So uh, that is a really good audio recorder. Um, I believe iOS, um, Apple phones have their own pretty high quality built-in one. Um, and I would not doubt that Androids do too. I'm just not sure if I know what that is um, or if there is one. Um, or what it would be called. Uh, I, I don't see one in my um, in my list of apps on my on my phone. Uh, so uh, a few more that we're going to talk about real quick. Uh, real quick, um, time lapses are really fun. You can film them by just setting your phone down and letting it record what's going on. So uh, 
it's going to utilize the time lapse is going to take a photo every predetermined amount of time. So like every second, every five seconds, every millisecond for as long as you tell it to, and then it's going to stitch all those together, play it back and fast forward essentially to our eyes. So uh, if you've ever seen like a building get constructed in five seconds, um, that's a time lapse. Someone recorded a time lapse of that happening. Um, these are really fun. I love sharing them on social media. Uh, I use them in my own professional videos and stuff. You've definitely seen these. Um, Lapsit Pro is one of these. So let's zoom back in a little bit so you don't have to look at my mug. Uh, here we go. Uh, and we're just going to do oh, there we go. new capture down here. Um, and then that's going to, again, utilize your cell phone's camera. And you can tell it, take a photo every uh, whatever milliseconds, seconds, or minutes. So all you have to do is do a little bit of math and say, let's say I want, um, you know, I want it just to take it every 10 seconds. I can hit okay. So it's going to take one photo every 10 seconds. You're going to want to record for a long time for that. Uh, 1080p, that is the resolution. So it's just a higher resolution uh, rate. We want to set it to that. Uh, you can do more. So you can do flash mode, focus mode. A lot of times I set this to infinity. Otherwise your camera might be trying to focus on different things and it might focus on you know, something close up for one of the shots and then something far away for one of the other shots. And trying to see that in the middle of a video can be really jarring. So uh, make sure that uh, you set that. I typically like to set it to uh, infinity or macro if you're, if you're filming something close up. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, if you wanna zoom in, this does let you zoom in. It's got a little zoom slider over there. Uh, and then all you have to do is hit record. And now it's going to take a photo every 10 seconds. And down here, you can see that's your, oh, hold on, let's get this in here. Uh, 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 is that gonna do it? My there camera does not wanna focus. So this is, it's taken two frames. Um, so it's shot two frames and this one will pop up to three as soon as this hits 20. Uh, that's how many frames it has taken. So it's taken three frames of video now. So, uh, one of the things that you might want to do a little bit of math with is that um, a time lapse, a film, a video um, outside of a time lapse, they play back at either 24 or 30 frames per second. So if I want um, a 10 second time lapse, I need to do some math and know that I need 300 frames for that to play back at 30 frames a second uh, or 240 frames if I want a 24 frames a second video to play back at that. So um, you're gonna have to just do some math and see how long you need to film for, pretty easy. Um, and then uh, very similar to uh, the other stuff, once you've got that down, you can actually trim, the, there's like a little audio or a little video editor in here in um, Lapsit Pro that you can edit. Uh, you wanna render it and create video. Uh, you wanna give it a file name. Uh, it's gonna give it my name. Uh, it's gonna give you a, Kind of a countdown. This only got three frames to render, and then you can publish, uh, which essentially will just let you share it with whoever you want. Um, you don't have to do any of those things after you uh, have rendered it. You can hit close, and that'll be available on your phone uh, with the rest of your videos and stuff like that. So you don't actually have to share it with anyone at that moment in time. Um, another time lapse app that I like oh, was it Frame Lapse. Um, so Frame Lapse Pro very similar. So immediately recognizes your um, phone's camera. And there we go. You can see the frame interval is one second. The It's just going to go. It's a duration is infinite. It's just going to go until I shut it off. And then let's see if I can get that straight there. And then um, it's going to play back at 30 times. So it's a little bit different. Um, all of those settings, again, are over here on the left. You can record. Uh, it's just going to record. Um, and it's showing you down here in the middle how long of a record time that is. Uh, you can hit done, and then it'll just play back at that 30 times speed. Uh, and then once you're done, uh, you can, uh, let's see, where's my play it? Oh. You play it, so if you go to your video gallery there. Um, so it looks oh. like, if I can interrupt for just a second, yeah. we have frame lapse light, L-I-T-E, is okay. the not, is the not pro version that doesn't cost that is the free version. Okay. So and it I says that, frame lapse light, I believe. And I believe that is this like very similar, if not 
identical to the one that we're talking about here uh, on an Android phone. So uh, Susan, thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. Again, I've tried to come up with enough of these uh, or come up with these and, and work with someone that has an iOS device so that I can, um, you know, so that these are available for yep. people <laughs> with different uh, operating systems. Yeah. I'm installing uh, them. I'm installing each of them on our, our library iPad as we go along too. So. Oh, great. Uh, all right. Well, everyone gets the, the luxury of watching me take a sip of my ginger ale right now. So. Oh, downsides of talking a lot and talking fast, everyone. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to go over. Oh, go ahead, Susan. I was just going to mention the um, the lapset um, uh -huh. on the iPad. The It's really nice. All the tools are on the right-hand side on the iPad. And oh, it's cool. like a whole lot of them. You can just go right to whatever you need, like exposure and oh, great. all that kind of stuff is just right there all in the one one part of the screen where I know with smaller screens from phones, sometimes you have to hunt a little bit for some of yeah. the tools. Um, but yeah, so on the tablets, that one might even be, you know, for those of you with tablets, that might be a good one where all the tools are kind of laid right out on that main screen. Oh, perfect. That's great to know. And I feel like every time I get really comfortable with one of these apps, they update it and um, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then things I, move. Yep. <laughs> and then I grumble like my grandfather about yeah. how yeah. things were never the same or whatever. Same. So yeah, the um, only constant is change, right? <laughs> yes, there you go. So um that's good to know. And again, um these tablets even take great photos. So um film and time lapse with them. These are super fun. Um, you know, when there's people out, you know, doing road work or someone working on that house across the street, or I'm cleaning up a room or something like that, or you may be doing a, a DIY project out in your garage, just set your phone up, or your tablet up and record yourself doing these things. Um, I did it putting a cat tower together one time. We have a big cat tower. that's like seven feet tall. Um, and, uh, they're silly. They're they're It's a fun way to even capture just memories without, you know, having a professional or a real end goal in mind. Um, they're just kind of fun to see, pardon me, a little different than a video or than a standard photo. Um, well, I'm going to go over two now. Uh, and these are a little bit more, um, I use these in conjunction with my time-lapse apps. They're, I'm going to call them a little more fun. Um, uh, and you can roll your eyes at what I consider fun. Uh, but one of them is this, it's called Sun Position Demo. And I believe this one is, I know this one has a different iOS uh, name, right, Susan? Okay. Uh, I will find out. Okay. Um, it's, I feel like I had a different name at some point. Uh, so what this is gonna do is what I use this for is that um, I use this to determine when the sun is gonna come up, when it's gonna set, when the moon's gonna come up, when the moon's gonna set where it's going to come up at. So uh, if I want to make sure that I'm recording a time lapse and I don't want the sun to come out from behind a building or something like that, I want to make sure that it's going to be in shot or out of shot the whole time or whatever. Um, I will actually use this app and you can see as it'll utilize your camera. And as you move this around, it'll show you, uh, let's see if we can get that up. It'll show you, it's probably easier if I do it this way, where the sun will be uh, uh, is it going to show me? The sun's down. Okay, everyone, there we go. So it'll show you where the sun and the moon are uh, going to be. So you can actually utilize this using your camera. And I swear this is a lot more fun outside in the middle of the day at night. Uh, it's not a lot there. But you can see uh, in the times that it's going to be there at too. Um, I think my... Okay, I can see it now, yeah. There we go. I think like that my... Um, yeah. I think that my... I think my GPS is trying to calculate itself because it's whipping all over the place. They should be over this way. This way is west. <laughs> or it, should be. Uh, it might be trying to show me sunrise, maybe um, over this way. So it says PM again. I yeah. think my cameras or my phone. I live in a metal house, everyone. So like my, I can't even send texts on my phone um, inside this house. Um, um, what does the icon look like for for that app? Is it great question? Just a, it is a yellow sun with a blue. A little sun. Let's see here. Okay. Zoom I don't see one. that one, but I do have I do oh. have an app that says sun position and path which has yeah, a, little, I, a little sun, which maybe is sim I, similar I, enough. I think perhaps. that they're very similar. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, which, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the other, I know that had a different name on iOS, but I, okay. it's very similar. It's not like. I'll put it in the, totally uh, the follow-up email. Yeah. So. Um, and if you turn it on and it looks very similar to this, you know, you got the right one. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so anyway, you can, again, use your, use your phone. You can see it on there to kind of see where the sun's going to, where the sunrise is going to come at. Um, oh yeah, it's telling me that I have an abnormal magnetic field. 
uh, detected uh, because I live in a metal house. Uh, one of the other things that's really nice about this, if you're a photographer, is when you hit the, um, oh, sorry, folks, uh, is when you hit, so we've got sun path here, up at the three little uh, lines, if you go to data, um, I use this a lot too. Uh, so photographers and videographers use what we call golden hour. And it's that first hour of sunlight and the last hour of sunlight in each day. So we get two golden hours a day, one at morning, one at night. And it's when everything looks beautiful because there's no harsh sunlight out at that time. Um, and this will actually tell you every single day when uh, astronomical twilight in, civil twilight, golden hour in. So golden hour um, ends at 7.04 a.m. So anything before that, uh, so nautical twilight start, civil twilight start, sunrise, anything before 7.04 a.m. is gonna be what our golden hour is in the morning. And then it's gonna have the exact same kind of information at night. So uh, let's see here, golden hour start at 5.07 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, right? Is it gonna give us for tomorrow? Um, it, I mean, it's not gonna change too much day to day. So you could look at it for the next day. So anything after 5.07 p.m tomorrow night is going to be a really good time to take photos out. And this is, I mean, if you're taking family photos or you just want to get out for a nice walk and see the sunset um, and utilize your gridded rule of thirds lines to take a really pretty photo of a sunset or something. Um, I use this one all the time uh, when it comes to that. Uh, and then the other one, I'd like to do a little bit of astrophotography. This one is called sky view free. Uh, let's see here. We'll zoom back in a little bit called sky view free and it's got a little bitty house with like a big dipper or a little dipper icon and it's just going to show me all of the constellations and stars and stuff so you can see oh yeah we can do that uh so if you want to film all those little dots are not a dirty screen so there's constellations there uh, this one's a little bit harder to showcase on a two flat screen <laughs> cameras but you can see what are those pisces maybe um yeah it says pisces down here uh in the bottom left so oh. Um, and that'll show you all sorts of stuff. So if you've ever gotten into, uh, like night time lapses or astrophotography or anything like that, that one is an incredible one to use as well. Um, I use that one, even if you're stargazing while you're out camping or something really, really good one. Um, and I just wanted to throw that one in there. I think that one, that one's new. Um, I'm hoping that there's an iOS option for that as well, Susan, or for anyone else listening. Um, okay. One of the other things that you might want to do, and I use this um, a little bit for um, uh, clients when I when they have like an app, let's say. Um, so I've got a client who developed this app recently, uh, and it looks <laughs> instead of the whole video video just being this, uh, you know, uh, us holding a phone up to it, we wanted to see the actual screen of the thing. So uh, we use an app called Du Recorder. Uh, let's see here, just Du Recorder. Oh. I'm going to get that off the screen there. Uh, so this one will actually open up over all of your other apps. There's not a ton in there. And it's just this little bitty gold icon. I'm just going to leave this zoomed in. You guys don't need to see me at all. DU Recorder. Uh, and when you click on it, this little bunch of things will appear on the side. Uh, so you can tell it what you want. Uh, you can tell it to record. It's going to say three, two, one. And now it's literally recording everything on your screen. So if you want to, you know, scroll and do some stuff, it's going to record all of those things for you. Um, and then you guys can judge me by all the weird apps and stuff that I have. Um, so this is great. You know, you can go to mm -hmm. your weather app and do it. Um, these I use again, very specifically for, um, for that. And then to stop recording, all you have to do is pull that little icon out from the edge of your phone. It'll always be hidden. It'll go away here in a sec again. But you can see it's really light down there. If you touch that and pull it in oh, and pull it over, you can pull it to wherever it's helpful for you. You hit stop um, and then tell it to be quiet. It's always going to try to get you to sell more. Uh, and then this again, it tries to get you to sell a lot. There's always an X on the screen. Um, but you can hit play and you can see I'm not touching my phone it's going through. So this is a really fun app. Uh, it does watermark things there in the bottom. Again, it wants you to buy uh, the full version. Really, really fun, really powerful app to record your screen. Um, 
these are fun. I like doing these on like road trips. Um, I don't know if you have like your, your maps turned on and like you pop over to a new state and it says, welcome to Wisconsin. Um, I like to just capture those every time I go over a state border. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll put it together a That's montage fun. of those or something like that. Yeah. Um, but really fun to do. Um, again, if you have clients or you want to record some apps or anything like that, a uh, really, really powerful app to be able to, to do that. Um, okay. And now we're talking about some screen recording ones here. Uh, let's see. And then let's get that out of there. Uh, after you open the D recorder though, it's always going to want to be on. So you have to like tell it to hush and get off your screen. Um, cinema F five V I do this so much. You'd think it would be so much easier for me. Um, I never know where I'm pressing though. Uh, cinema F five V and this is going to be a, um, a camera again, it's going to utilize your cell phone camera. Um, and it's going to unlock pretty much all of the really powerful tools that are built into your cell phone's camera that we don't actually have access to uh, because people don't need them for the most part. But it's going to give us all sorts of stuff. So it's going to, uh, you know, there's a menu up here. You can give our whoop, our fun grid lines that everyone loves so much. Well, the Adam loves so much. You can maybe see something a little bit lighter. Um, so you can get those grid lines, you know, it's called a histogram. So it's showing how much red, green, and blue is in your shot. Uh, we can turn those off. Uh, you can, oh, it's lighting mode. I do menu. We can do, um, I think that's handshake mode. So it actually will stabilize a little bit of your shot for you. Um, really nice. Uh, if you want to, um, uh, you know, connect headphones to your device, you can. And I think that's just so it knows that you don't have a microphone attached to it. And then down here, you can play, you can tell it to autofocus, you can tell it to uh, record close up under macro mode, um, infinity, you can follow faces. So I was just me. adding, um, for those of you searching for it in your iOS store, it's cinema and then FV hyphen five. So when you're searching for it, oh, yes. Um, if you I search think, just for the whole word, it won't, it won't pull it up. I think I said FV five or F five V or something like that. So I think I said it wrong in the first place. <laughs> um, so um, really good, really powerful one again. Um, and then there's like metering mode. So you can, it'll, you know, try to focus on all these different things. Um, ISO is another popular one that you can adjust. So um, ISO is how sensitive to light the sensor inside of your camera is. So we can say, we want it to be ISO 3000 and it'll, uh, what do we want that to be? We want it to, uh, uh, there you go. Um, so we can make this a lot brighter if we want. So you can see everything in my room. Um, we can make it a lot darker if we want. And it's gonna, we can adjust it over here on this. Um, our ISO is going to be uh, part of this as well. So really, really powerful tools. Like anything, you just hit record. Um, oh, I hit it too much uh, or too short of a, of a one. So you can sit there and watch it record. You can actually see um, audio meters where they add up here. So as I'm talking, you can see that these are going on. So you know, again, we talked about monitoring all of our stuff. I am talking now, watching my audio meters bounce around on my screen. So I know that I'm recording my audio and I know that I'm recording my video because I can see uh, the video time up there in that corner. Uh, again, really, really simple. Uh, you can hit stop. Um, you know, it'll also show you your battery level, which is really nice. You can go to the photo mode uh, if you want. Um, really, really powerful tool. Uh, and I like this one for filming uh, because, again, it unlocks a lot of these really powerful tools that um, your actual just regular camera, uh, if I go into my regular video camera, I don't have nearly as many of these options um, to record that with. So... Uh, okay, we've got just a few more here that I want to talk about, everyone. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, this is a new one. It's called Photo Play. Um, these have the silliest names, I swear. Uh, it's just F-O-T-O, -O, Photo Play. And uh, we're going to click on that. And this is a video editing app. So uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to get these videos shot or take our photos or whatever, film our time lapses. And then we wanna be able to edit them a little bit too, because as fun as they are, um, uh, oh, hey, Mark, you mentioned that it wants that Cinema FV-5 wants to access your device ID and call information. Um, I, 
I'm not sure why that is. You could try telling that no. Um, yeah. What I usually like to do is if an app asks for stuff that I don't think it should it should need, I will say, yeah, don't allow and still open it up and see what functionality yeah. it has. Um, um, and then, and it, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, Susan, you go ahead. I, I had no reason to interrupt you. Well, I was just going to say, and then, you know, then you get the opportunity to say, okay, yes, it, it will do what I need it to do. And it has the functionality I need without right. me giving it access to that. Or if it doesn't, then you can, you know, move on to the next app that might work better. Right. And, and again, Mark, if this one is not wanting to work on your phone, um, it, I, I like it a lot. There are other options out there too. Um, and again, do what you're comfortable with this. If an app is asking you for like too much information, um, you know, like firstborn name, the street that you grew up yeah. on, your pet's name or whatever, just tell it no. Um, uh, on to, oh, video editing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this one is called photo play. This is another one that tries to get you to buy something about every eight seconds, but it's a really good video editor. Uh, so I've got some of video I edited with my daughter earlier. Uh, again, pretty simple. We're gonna click new. And then you can see all my photos that I've taken recently. Um, and then you could do, you can see all the videos that I've taken lately also. We're gonna go back. We're just gonna select that one. Oh, my cats are gonna, oh, it's gonna give us a little pink, oh, a little focus here, a little pink check mark to say, yep, that's okay. Uh, you're going to focus, there we go. Uh, we're going to do that light photo and then maybe one of my little baby down here. And then once we're done, click the little pink arrow. And these are going to come in, if we play through this, this is going to play through the timeline and it's going to go between these photos. Now there's just kind of a cut right now. Uh, so as it goes from photo to photo, it's just a cut. Uh, what we can do on these is add effects. You can mess around with your timeline. You can shorten up how much uh, time is on these things. So when you click on a clip, it'll give you little arrows on either side. And you can say, oh, you know, I, I don't want to see these cats for that long. We can click on this one uh, and move those around. So in just a matter of seconds, we can take uh, our photos and our videos and this will combine them. So, you know, now or originally it was, I don't know, 10 seconds or something like that. Uh, now it is five still there. Uh, when you click on these, uh, let's see here, if we click on that, uh, you can split these. If the clip is really long, you can split them up. Uh, let's see, where's the at effect? That's not what I want. Uh, photo play. <laughs> oh, this one you can add music to, so you could record um, using your the record function of your phone. You could record some voiceover. You could extract some music from like a YouTube video or something. You could add music. It's just going to import some stuff. There's a lot of really good uh, music on here too. So all sorts of good stuff. Um, but you could record anything, play that there. Uh, let's see here. I want to make sure that, is that going to give me, there we go. So uh, the animation is where we have the transition between shots. Uh, so we want to do like a zoom in, a fade in. So you can see it's going to fade in to these shots now. Uh, if we click on that one, let's say we want to do a, a zoom in. So it's going to zoom in a little bit. So you can add some really nice effects to your photos um, as we do this. So you can create really, really high-end slideshows in a matter of minutes in this app. Um, and again, this one is um, photo play. Uh, and then when you're ready to export, there's a little bitty pink arrow up here. Uh, you can tell it 1080p. And remember, that's our higher, the higher number is usually better as long as it's free. Uh, we can click that. Oh, it's going to try to get us to buy something. I clicked on an ad. Uh, oh, no. But it saved it for us. And then again, that will be available in our, uh, in our videos section as well. Uh, Phil... Oh, that, go ahead. One, that one may be just available through Android because it looks like ah. it's part of YouTube. Oh, so, okay. um, but for those of you with um, iOS devices, it looks like if you type that in there, there are some other apps that come up that may be similar. Hopefully, yeah. Again, I just I just found that one like three days ago. Yeah. Um, it's or it's been on my list for a while. I just downloaded it finally and, and played with it. So, um, I do apologize for that for for the Apple users in the crowd. Um, Filmora Go. So let's see here. Filmora Go 
is another one that I like to use. Uh, and again, these are all pretty similar in the grand scheme of things. This one wants you to buy something every five minutes. Also, uh, it wants you to rate it constantly. You can just go up here, get a new project. And then from here, you can add in photos and videos, um, all the stuff that we've seen already that's coming in. You know, it'll go in order. So the same photos, we're gonna hit next. Uh, it's gonna transcode, which essentially is just its fancy way of saying it's taking these, combining them into a video. And now, exact same thing. We're gonna play through the little timeline. There's a fun effect in there, some sort of page turn. Uh, cool. So to edit any of these, you can click on that transition uh, and then any sort of transition that's down here, you can find a ton of them. Oh, excuse me. Too tight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you can find a ton of those. Click OK. Oh, oh my apologies, everyone. I, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, at least I'm off screen right now and I'm not doing this in person or in front of a huge class, right? It probably sounds great with this really high end microphone, though. <laughs> Uh, you can also click apply all. So every transition will be the same. Uh, go back to our beginning and we'll play again real quick. So it just kind of does a fade out in between them. All good. Uh, so this one's good. Uh, this one wants you to do, is it pro export? Yeah, it wants you to do that. So once you're done with that, um, oh, where's that at? Where's that at? Where's that at? Uh, sorry, everyone. Let's see if I can find that one. Uh, you know what? I'm not sure where that okay, one went off see. to. So it looks like, oh, yeah, that's the pro version. We know it's pro. Version. Oh, here we go. I had draft. So if you hit draft and you haven't done that, and click on that. So we're back to that one. Um, and then this one, you can add music, you can add all sorts of stuff again. Uh, and then, oh, if you just do export, I bet I was using one of the transitions that you couldn't do uh, without it. So it just says, save to camera roll. All good. Again, you're gonna get an ad. Um, so this one was saved to our camera roll and we can, again, share that, upload it to YouTube, whatever you wanna do with it. Uh, we got two more here. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, we got Kinemaster. Uh, if I can find that. Channel. Here we go. So Kinemaster, K-I-N-E, Master. Uh, and this is, again, a very basic uh, editor that we're going to use. All right. This, this is also going to give you so many ads. I apologize. I wish they just, if anyone out there is an app maker, and uh, wants to do that, so you can just continue to the app there. Uh, oh, it's a, there. You go. There we go. So when it asks you, find that X. Get out of here. We don't want to pay for this <laughs> stuff. So a couple of videos that you can create new. Um, so you can create vertical videos if you want to do stuff for Instagram. You can do square ones. Uh, you know all sorts of stuff. Display mode. Et cetera, et cetera. You want to click next. And then it's got all of the things that you've ever filmed and recorded. Uh, let's see here, image assets. So, you know, all of these image assets, the backgrounds and things like that, that you can add to it. Um, this one, I believe you can watch ads to, uh, to get some stuff. So you can unlock things by watching ads. Is that all? Um, so, uh, Pretty basic, you can also take photos and videos with this one, so you can actually unlock your camcorder. And this should, here in a sec, unlock that, yep. And then, hey, we're back there to seeing that big bright light in the background of my shot. So you can record with that. Uh, you can take photos with this one as well. So you can actually take photos, capture content directly into the project on this one, which is really, really good. Um, I don't think any of the other ones do that. Um, that I'm aware of. So really, really powerful. And again, you can just play through. It's just a background right now. You can add music, you can record audio, all of these things. As you're playing through, you can delete stuff. Um, again, the little bitty, oh, come on camera, we're almost done. Uh, the little bitty box with like a little arrow, 
is how you want to get that out of there. So uh, you can um, adjust the size of it. Uh, you might want to uh, focus there. There you go. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> hey, there, there we go. go. There we go. Uh, oh, it does not like this light of mine in the background. I think that's the problem. There we go. Oh, wrong side. So that 1080p HD. Uh, and then you just want to save his video with the highest quality that we can get. So we're just going to save it. It's not going to do anything. Um, and again, you can just skip it. You don't need to download anything or you don't need to pay for anything on these ones. Um, and it'll export. Super simple. Um, and then you're all good. Okay, let's see. And then one more, one more. Uh, Viva that video. One, that one is oh, yes. the same for iOS as it is for Android. It's, it's KineMaster. Okay, cool. I thought this one was pretty similar. Yeah. All right. And then... Okay, Viva Video is the next one. Uh, if anyone's wondering who is scratching at my door in the background, if you can hear that, it is one of my cats. <laughs> uh, I'm not keeping anyone hostage. It's just a cat <laughs> trying to get in. Uh, here we go. You're going to focus. This one, Viva Video, V-I-V-A Video. Yep. So when you click that one, uh, this one will watermark your project. Uh, they update this one pretty regularly. This one's got a lot of really good tools. If you like doing, uh, I would say if you like doing TikToks or, or you know, some of these things, there's lots of fun music and effects and things like that. So again, do a new project. It's going to populate all that stuff that's on my camera. Uh, my, Oops. I froze guys. I froze everyone. One second. I see that. Okay. Um, we did have a question in the chat, which maybe you can address at the same time. Um, it looks like a lot of the free versions do have the watermarks. Uh -huh. um, is that watermark is then on on the finished? Usually, it, it would show up on the photos or the videos, the finished versions. Yes, um, unfortunately, it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, everyone. I apologize for that. Let's see okay. if we get this. Uh, but you can always here. decide from there if you want to, you know, if the app is good enough that then I think in those cases, usually the pro version uh, doesn't have the watermark, so. No, no, the, um, none of the pro versions do. I apologize, yeah. my nice camera is not uh, <laughs> hanging out with me right now, so. Also, I will say with, for Viva Video, we do we do still have our um, previous uh, recording where Adam came and did a, a full demonstration of Viva Video. Um, and we do have that up on our YouTube channel as well. Um, so that one you could you could watch the entire step. Basically, we did a, a, essentially a step by step um, with Viva Video. Yep. Um, okay. Can everyone see me again? I'm like yes, all blown out right now. I, can just, see uh, I don't know why my my nice camera popped off, but uh, we'll roll with it. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, there we go. So um, same thing on that one. Uh, you want to export it and, and get that out, and then uh, you can use them. Uh, and these do have watermarks on them. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Sherry, you asked that. Uh, so I don't know of any of the photo ones that will provide watermarks, but and none of the audio ones will, uh, but the video ones will. That's the, we have not gotten to a point in technology yet where someone is willing to provide a really nice high-end uh, video editing system for us uh, that will edit and then not provide watermarks. So yeah. um, uh, that is kind of a kind of a bummer uh for that so uh we can again i could talk at length about all of this stuff for for hours and hours but um i've taken up an hour and a half of everyone's time um i want to give you guys some time for questions if you have them or um it could be about any of the specific uh apps or or anything else for that matter uh, i am an, an open book uh, as it were and I will say too that uh, if you if you do get really interested in this, um, the library does have we have four creation stations upstairs on the second floor, and they do have um, advanced video editing software through Adobe called Adobe Premiere, um, where if you did uh, and we do have Adam come in and teach in person workshops on Adobe Premiere too. So if you keep a lookout for that, we'll probably have one. Um, as soon as we can be back in person, uh, where we can yeah. get and have him come in and do um, Adobe Premiere, which is a uh, an advanced product that will let you do some amazing things. I've been I've been working with it since you came and did the tutorials for us um, here at work, and 
um, it gives you a lot of control and stuff. And that's one right. where you don't have to have your own subscription to it because the library does have a subscription. So yep. as long as the library is open and one of the computers that has it on it is open, you can come and use those too. So if you wanted to take all your take all of your um, your clips and stuff that you've done on your phone and then put it all together in something using with no watermark with no watermark yes yeah. <laughs> using adobe premiere you could do that here at the library yeah I, I would recommend that i mean that's what i use as a professional editor and um I, i've been using it for over a decade now it's great i pay um like i pay an ungodly amount for the subscription service and the library does that for you so again yes. use that resource it's great um and and i'm always happy i actually have a a, a youtube tutorial series on that. I go to the library and, and teach classes on that. So uh, it's really, it's, it's intimidating to start with, but it's really easy once you get into it. And it's so, so powerful. You can do anything that you want. They edit uh, professional films on them. If you've seen any Marvel movie, they've all been edited on it. So a really good, uh, uh, a really good uh, so we do software, have a, software to use. We do have a question about um, if the video apps let you splice videos together or is it easier to take one long video and then cut out parts? Oh, uh, Rosalie, Rosalie, um, I apologize if, you're, if your name is not one of those pronunciations. Uh, it's probably easier to take small chunks of video and then put them together. Um, and then if you realize that maybe your full video is a little longer, you can cut out parts, you can trim the beginning and end off. So earlier on, we talked about how cell phones are a little shaky. When you go to hit your camera to start it, there's a little bit of a shake sometimes. So with those apps, when you were when we were editing video and you were to touch one of the apps or one of the video clips in the thing, the like arrows would appear on both sides of it. You can kind of cinch those in and get that wobble out from when you hit the start and when you hit the end, um, rather than trying to record some really long thing and cutting out a bunch of individual parts. Um, that would be my recommendation on that. Great, great question, by the way. I have a question for you on, um, since we're talking about stabilizing your phone, um, do you have a recommendation for like phone tripods or have you seen any um, that you'd recommend for people who are say traveling and want something kind of small, but um, yes. with just any I old, any old one do or uh yeah pretty much anything that you can afford i actually got some stuff right around here so everyone hold on i'm gonna pop off i'm gonna pop off screen for just a second <laughs> and if anybody's curious i do have one of the little uh uh sets for with um extra camera lenses that you can attach to your cell phones um i have ones that just clip to my phone and they basically clip on the top of the where the camera screen is um, and they can be really fun. There's a, you know, you can get, um, get a little kit. I have a fit one that's a fisheye lens, um, which makes it, uh, look kind of like a, like an aquarium almost. That's why they call it a fish lens. Um, mm -hmm. but they're very, they're very interesting and they travel very easily. So if you're ever interested in taking your phone as a primary form of, uh, either taking photos or videos, it's a nice way to, to pack very lightly. <laughs> I agree. Um, actually, I don't know where mine is right now. I feel like maybe maybe my wife walked off with it and did some. <laughs> she has some video for her work. Um, so in terms of tripods for your phone, there's a lot of different options. Um, anything that works, it has like its own little. So I, this is one of my favorite pieces here. And it's a little, if we can see it on this side, it's got like some little finger grooves to help you hold. Okay. It's not a tripod but it does connect to tripods and then your phone will kind of clamp down in it. Okay. And then if we can, if I can show the right, and then it screws down. So now I've got this nice grip mm -hmm. on my phone. That's turned it into something a little more stable. Sure. Um, and then this just has an adapter at the bottom. Oh, I'm using the other camera. Now. That's why I'm like, oh, why am I doing this wrong? Uh, so it's got a little adapter at the bottom that connects to most tripods. Uh, it'll also screw into uh, these little, uh, like most tripods have a, oh, here's one. Um, I have too much stuff on my desk, everyone. I'm embarrassed to show you. Uh, most tripods have a little quarter inch long, quarter inch wide screw at the end that we screw all this stuff onto. This is actually just a little clamp that can clamp on to like a tabletop or, or something. I actually use this one for time lapses all the time. Uh, and it's got this little bitty arm that you can 
you know, adjust to go in any direction that you want. Um, this would at will attach to that, and then you can maneuver your phone around to record time lapses. Um, you know, they'll come with, you know, something like this. So this is like a little bitty phone clamp that you'd find it for putting for putting in your car, even. So you know, when you're when you are trying to get directions or something, and you just want to do it, it just pulls over your phone a little bit, um, and this will it'll just pop right off. It's spring loaded. So it just pops right onto your phone. You can clamp onto this. Um, I don't have any of my little tripods nearby, mm -hmm. but this is the same concept. There's a little screw at the end. Um, and now I have More a phone stability. for stability and I can attach this to, to anything I want. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna, this arm is not very strong, uh, but I actually have my nice camera, one of my nice cameras attached to one of these. So it holds a lot of weight. Um, and I've left these up for a six month time lapse before of a building being built. Oh, uh, they're, they're rock solid. Um, and there's not a, you can just buy them on Amazon, like little articulating arms. Um, but if you look up like selfie stick tripod, uh, pretty much anything that you can buy for over like 12 bucks is going to be a good quality, decent enough quality for, for your phone. Um, you know, I've got Excellent. some tripods that are a couple hundred bucks that it, they do the exact same thing that the, <laughs> the $40 tripods, the $40 tripods do. Other questions? Uh, Would anyone like to um, ask a question out loud? If you are interested, please um, just use that raise hand button down at the bottom of your screen and I can uh, um, unmute you so that you can ask a question out loud if you have one as well. So, uh, Rose, I'll answer your question in just a sec if no one else <laughs> has one. <laughs> okay, no takers at this moment okay. of time. So uh, Rose, um, one of the things that I don't want to do is use my camera's digital zoom. So unlike, uh, and I'm just going to use my basic camera for this one. So unlike one of my nicer cameras that um, has, I can actually zoom in a little bit. It's not a huge zoom, but I can zoom in on it, um, on stuff. Uh, and all it does is it adjusts, that camera adjusts the optics inside so that the image quality is still the same hitting the sensor. Uh, the cameras that we have, the only zoom that we can do is by zooming in digitally. This is a horrible way to show this. I don't like this camera at all, guys. I apologize. Uh, so there's a bunch of photos of my family and stuff over there on the wall. It's okay quality, but what's happened is my camera sensor size is the exact same, and somehow it has tr it's trying to make um, you know more sense out of what's going on over there. And it's they're decent, but they're oh, I'm trying to do this backwards. I don't have the right. Oh, I don't have my nice camera again. Um, so instead of zooming in to get something across the room, Rose, what I would do is I would actually walk closer uh, and just film it from five feet away rather than trying to zoom in. Um, you can't always do this if you're at like a ball game or you're somewhere where you just literally can't get close. Uh, like don't try to go to the White House and get really, really close and say that Adam told you. Um, you can't, you know, you can't do those sort of things in certain circumstances, but what I would recommend doing is just getting closer to your subject, filling the camera frame with it, filling the frame with it, whatever, um, up close. Um, and it's going to provide in the video, there's going to be more pixels associated with that subject, uh, to make it crisper and clearer than if we were trying to record something by zooming in on it and further away. Um, I hope that makes sense. That one's kind of a convoluted answer to a very simple question that you asked. Also, if you were thinking about um, taking a picture of something and making that picture much, much bigger when you printed it out, yeah. um, there's only so much detail that can be printed out as you get bigger and bigger to, to make like an 11 by seven by 14 print of something. So right. it, the closer that's a you great can, analogy. Yeah. The closer you can get to it, the more detail you have to begin with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we just, we only have so much data that we're recording at any given time on a, one of these little sensors on our cameras or on our cell phones. Uh, so we want to give it all of the data that we can. And we do that by getting closer, mm -hmm. providing a lot of light for it, uh, making sure that there's not a lot of contrast um, and, and all of those other things. Other questions? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put, I'll put my video back on here too.
So I'm here to other questions. Hey, there you are. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I get so lonely. Yeah, this, I know. Uh, yeah. It's hard. It's hard when you're talking. You know, the webcam void that it that it is yeah. <laughs> over here. I, I know just got it's, my it's, multiple screens on myself over here. So yeah. <laughs> I know it's nice for the in the web webinar format that we use um, to keep things moving along and stuff. But sometimes it is it is hard when you you know I don't know who I'm talking to and you have faces yes. and things. <laughs> So, all right. Any final questions from anybody? No? Well, Adam, I want to say thank you so much for coming tonight. And, yeah, no, happy. Uh, Thanks for having me. over some more um, fun mobile apps. And there's some new ones this time that I'm excited to get to try out too now that I didn't get to try after last time. Um, so, and uh, like I said, um, if you're interested, please feel free to come into the library. We are open. Uh, you can come in and use our creation stations if you want to try Adobe Premiere. Uh, we'll probably have a class on, hopefully, workshop on that in the future, maybe over the summer. Um, we do also have our Tuesdays at two tech workshops, if anybody's interested in those. Um, this month we are covering TikTok tomorrow, um, and then Excel and, Word, and uh, PowerPoint later this month. And then next month we'll have some, some uh, Google, Google workshops in April. Um, and then we have our specialty tech workshops are usually on Monday nights, um, usually once a month or twice a month, just depends. Um, and we'll have those again soon. So, well, cool. I'm going right. to type my, oh, I, just, you, I, okay, I think good. I just sent it to Perfect. Susan. So, oh yeah, it went to, yep. If you, it has uh, else. I can also put it in the um, follow-up email too. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. I'm going to send my, that's my, yeah, okay. That's my email. Uh, I'm I'm typically an open book about again about answering questions. Um, I love sharing this information, and um, the more people taking good videos and good photos out there, the better. Uh, so pester me if you have any questions. Excellent. All right, I'll go ahead and move the spotlight here. And if there are any other any other final questions, if not, thank you so much, Adam. Um, thank you everyone for joining us and I will send out the uh, link to the recording and uh, the copy of the presentation and everything um, probably before next I'm hoping before next week we'll see uh, just depends on how busy we get here at the at the library but soon for sure. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone have a good night. Thanks everyone have a good evening. Bye.